I'm Dr. Madeline Mant. I'm a research associate at the University of Toronto Mississauga in the Department of Anthropology. And recently my team and I have been undertaking a survey, a survey of University of Toronto students investigating their attitudes about and perceptions of COVID-19. With COVID vaccinations now underway in Canada and many people waiting anxiously for their turn, now recently this survey has turned to asking questions about vaccine uptake, questions of transparency, questions of safety, and questions of overall efficacy. And what's been interesting is what we're hearing from the students overall over the past nine months is not dissimilar to what we're seeing in a larger national conversation. There's been a lot of questions surrounding how does COVID-19 relate to the 1918 influenza, for instance, in terms of just uh, you know, overall mortality or the fear and the spread. And there's been a lot of discussions of the public health interventions there. Now, I think there's a lot of good parallels that can be drawn when we discuss things like the H1N1, uh, the swine flu outbreak in 2009. So there was a huge vaccination program in Canada until now, really the largest mass immunization campaign in Canada's history. But there were concerns, again, folks were saying, Things like, well, it's just a flu, or my immune system is really strong, or it's okay if I get it, I just wanna get it and get it over with. So we're seeing a lot of those same attitudes towards COVID-19, particularly before the vaccine was available. With polio, it's a really interesting example because this sort of gold standard of vaccine testing was born through polio. So there was an incredible amount of hope in the newspapers. If you look at, at reports from the time, an incredible amount of focus on this sort of miracle intervention. I'm seeing a little bit of that same kind of excitement, particularly on social media, people saying, I'm ready to line up, like, let's go, it's time for the vaccine. We will start to see celebrities and you know, more politicians getting the vaccine. You know, Elvis Presley very famously got his vaccine on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1956 in an attempt to get teenagers more excited about getting their vaccine. So I know we're going to start seeing public health campaigns rolling out that are very much like that, looking for that kind of uptake because we need to encourage people that might be, if not hesitant, just maybe a little bit uninterested in it to try and get people really, really excited. So I think we can see a lot of those different parallels. The hesitancy runs back a long time and I think it's really important to take lessons from that, that these conversations need to keep happening. People are complex, people have lots of different reasons for being worried or nervous or maybe just a little bit uninformed, but keeping those conversations open and ensuring that we're not spreading misinformation is a way that individuals can really take this into their own hands, particularly at a time when I know I felt really, really powerless in terms of what I can do and what we can do is continue to do what we've been doing is staying distant and staying vigilant.